it's one of Britain's most original holiday destinations. With fantastic beaches and stunning scenery. Paved in French culture and English heritage. Full of mystery and intrigue. Let's take a break in the English Riviera. and welcome to Britain's Best Breaks, the show which helps you to make all the right decisions when you're planning a trip away. And I'm Adam Woodroff. This time we've come back to the beautiful English Riviera. Join us as we guide you around three very different resorts, Torquay, Brixham and Paynton. This beautiful resort really does have loads to offer, but we'll be showing you the very best in places to visit, places to stay and eat in the area, starting here in Torquay, the Queen of the Riviera. And then heading south to Brixham and Paynton. The great thing about the Riviera is its variety. There really is something here for everyone. Yep, whether you want a cosmopolitan break in Torquay, a beautiful laid-back trip to Brixham, or maybe a good old fun seaside day out in Paynton, you'll find the very best here. So sit back, relax, put your feet up, and let us do the legwork for you. Right, next I'm going to go to the beach. Got your trunks? Of course I have, speedos at the ready. Good luck with that one. Thank you. I'm going to head into town, so we'll catch up with you later. Victorian gentry who dubbed the three towns of Torquay, Brixham and Paynton the English Riviera and it's easy to see why. Back then anyone who was anyone owned a waterfront holiday home here and the Victorian influence can still be seen around Torquay today. The famous Seven Hills are home to beautiful villas overlooking the stunning seafront and rival any waterfront scene you'd find on the French Riviera. Torquay was one of the original English seaside holiday resorts and a favourite of wealthy Victorians. But it still attracts thousands of holiday makers every year who head down here for its mixture of cosmopolitan town, heritage and beautiful beaches. Torquay is great for shopping, so why not take a walk around the beautiful area and discover the fantastic shops this seaside resort has to offer. Or if you fancy some serious retail therapy, the huge shopping centre is just the place. There are certainly plenty of ways to spend your time, but a must when you're in Torquay is a walk along the original Victorian palm-lined promenade. The palm tree is now a symbol of Torquay and the English Riviera, and you'll see them growing naturally nearly everywhere you look. This is because of the area's fantastic year-round warm climate. And when it's time for a break and a bite to eat, there are plenty of waterfront cafes and restaurants. You really are spoilt for choice by the wide variety of places, so make sure you plan a long enough break to enjoy all these fantastic eateries. And for a taste of the high life, a trip down to Torquay's International Marina is a must. The continental influence here is obvious, and this combined with the abundance of palm trees makes it really easy to forget that you're only 200 miles away from London. From here you can look back over Torquay's fantastic seafront gardens and soak up the atmosphere of its lively harbour. Torquay's coastline and harbourside area is rather unique and a great place to visit while you're here is Living Coasts. This fantastic coastal zoo offers an amazing insight into wildlife from the coastlines of the world. In the underground viewing areas you'll see seals, puffins, sea ducks, fur seals and nearly a hundred penguins, making it a great place to visit if you're a keen ornithologist. Living Coast is really easy to get to as it's right on Torquay's harbour side. I can't think of a better place to have a coffee and to admire the stunning views. Another fantastic way of watching the wildlife and taking in the stunning scenery is by boat. There are plenty of regular boat trips from Torquay to Paynton and Brixham. 
but if you simply fancy a leisurely day at sea, why not jump on one of the many cruises operating from the area? According to a recent local survey, the sand at Torquay Beach makes the best sandcastles in Britain. So grab your bucket and spade and get digging. Or if you're seeking a more relaxing holiday, why not admire the views of the area from the beautiful promenade? Torquay's impressive hills really are a sight to behold, and they're home to some of the most luxurious hotels in the Riviera. Not only that, but their location makes them perfect, as they're only a short walk from the beach and the town. So let's catch up with Amy, who's checking out what's going on in the evening. Torquay comes alive at night. There are loads of cool bars and restaurants, and it's a great place for a big night out. You'll really be sport for choice, so after a long day exploring Torquay's living coast, you can chill out in one of the many waterfront bars. A holiday in Torquay isn't complete without taking a trip to see your favourite incompetent hoteliers, Basil, Sybil and Manuel. It was here at the Glen Eagles Hotel that the Monty Python gang first came up with the idea for Faulty Towers. It's been closed for several years, but he's now reopening for guests. Let's just hope it's fictional owners aren't in charge. Basil! Right in the centre of Torquay, you'll find the most important Paleolithic caves in Northern Europe. Kent's Cavern Prehistoric Caves are Britain's oldest human dwelling, dating back 500,000 years. But it wasn't just humans who used to live here. The caves were once home to hyenas, saber-toothed cats and woolly mammoths. This is a great place to visit if you love geology and archaeology, and you can learn how your ancestors lived in Ice Age Britain. Travelling by boat is a really great way to see this beautiful Riviera coastline. And if you're lucky, you could even see some bottlenose dolphins that live in the waters. But there are loads of other really fun ways to get here, so let's take a look. A great way to travel the Riviera if you don't fancy driving is on the Payton and Dartmouth steam train. If you feel like heading up to Dartmouth for a day, you can jump on the train and it'll take you right into the heart of this stunning national park. Dartmouth is the home to some stunning scenery and wonderful wildlife, which you can sit back and take in as you journey through the National Park. The park is famous for its semi-wild ponies that roam free within the area. So if you want to see the surrounding countryside at a leisurely pace, this is ideal. Back in Paynton, you won't be stuck for things to do. This traditional seaside resort still shows signs of its Victorian heritage. These funky little beach huts would have been a must-have years ago, but recently they've become a really fashionable way to spend the day at the beach. This is a family seaside resort and attracts tourists back year after year. When you come to Torquay, don't forget to pack your swimming gear. Set in the lovely location of Godrington Beach, Key West Water Park is a great way to spend a day. If you love getting wet, this is the place to do it, with features providing thrills and spills galore. And if you love animals, make your way down to the Paintant Zoo. They've got loads of fantastic creatures from armadillo to zebra. The zoo is home to over 250 exotic animal species, 70 of which are endangered. The zoo is incredible, but had a rather humble beginning, starting with the original owner, Herbert Whitley's two canaries. What's so special about Paintant Zoo is that every enclosure is designed to mimic the natural habitat of the animals. They've also got some fantastic gardens and grounds like this gorgeous Mexican oak collection. Paynton is a great family holiday location and has plenty of accommodation to offer from campsites to top quality hotels and everything in between. It's a traditional English seaside resort in its truest sense of the meaning. Its annual regatta attracts visitors year on year, and when you're this close to the sea, you know the fish and chips are going to be great. 
Clayton is also home to some fantastic old architecture, especially Old Way Mansion, which dates back to the 16th century. Nestled in the rugged cliffs south of Torquay and Paynton, you'll find Brixham, a beautiful and traditional English seaside town where fishing is still its main industry. Wandering around the harbour, you'll see fishermen unloading the catch of the day, which could well end up on your plate. But as well as the largest working harbour in England, Brixham is home to some stunning golden sandy beaches beautiful winding streets and wonderful historical sites. Devon is famous for many things. Cream teas, Exmoor, the seaside and of course Sir Francis Drake. Drake originated from this area and is commonly believed to be the first person to circumnavigate the globe. He did this in just three years, from 1577 to 1580, aboard his ship, the Golden Hind. A replica of which can be found here at Brixham Harbour. The boat's been thrilling visitors since 1963 and gives a unique insight into a sailor's life aboard a 16th century sailing ship. Brixham's association with Sir Francis Drake and Prince William of Orange also extends to a fine museum. The Brixham Heritage Museum covers the port's maritime past, the Napoleonic Wars, lifeboats, the railways and World War II. It's a fascinating place to include in your visit. And when you're exploring Brixham's bustling harbour, make sure you take yourself to the artist's corner. Artists have been gathering here for years to paint and draw their images of this busy fishing port and the results are stunning. You can spend hours exploring the many harbourside shops and a maze of streets and alleys that meander around this quaint town. Just a short walk out of town, you'll find the secluded sandy coves and towering cliffs of Berry Head. With its Napoleonic forts, the atmospheric Berry Head is a haven for several nationally rare and threatened species. The endangered horseshoe bat lives in the caves here. The Guillemot colony on the cliffs below the southern fort is one of the largest on England's south coast and can be closely watched live on CCTV in the visitor centre. Berry Head also acts as an important staging post for migrant birds. This is a great place to study natural history and enjoy nature, all of which you can do on organised guided walks. This certainly is the place to come if you're looking for a slower paced break. Well, I've come to somewhere you really can't miss when you're in the area. Cockington Court and Country Park is a traditional doomsday book estate. It combines a fantastic old manor house where the squires of Cockington lived until 1932 with 460 acres of stunning countryside. The area is great for walking and horse riding with a six mile network of accessible country paths to choose from. The estate is cared for by the Torbay Coast and Countryside Trust and the Manor House is now a thriving craft centre. Outside the estate you'll find the quaint thatched village of Cockington where the oldest building dates back to 1517. seen a village or a city like this before. 
Babacum Model Village at Torquay is an amazing 12th scale microcosm of Britain. Could this be Britain's smallest circus? Like everything, even the trains are made here in the village workshop. And guess what? They're always on time. There's nothing quite like the village cricket match. The village reflects the way we live. Communications, power, everything is represented. A great sense of humour, a medieval castle and fabulous gardens make it easy to see why this family attraction has fascinated generations of visitors for over 40 years. We've explored the cosmopolitan town and wonderful scenery of the Queen of the English Riviera, Torquay. We've had seaside fun and taken a walk on the wild side in Paynton. And we've discovered the maritime heritage and history of Brixham. For information on all the places we've visited in today's programme, you can log on to our website. That's right. On Britain's Best Breaks, we help you make all of the right decisions when planning a break to ensure you get the best out of your precious time off. You've enjoyed our trip to the English Riviera too and it's given you some ideas for when you come on holiday here. Sadly, that's all we have time for this week. So from Amy and I, goodbye. goodbye.